All right, welcome back. So before you watch this video on independence of perpendicular vectors, I would like you to watch this other video on YouTube, Relative Motion from a Car. So pay attention to how this water balloon that is getting dropped from the car, pay attention to uh, what its motion looks like from the perspective of somebody watching from the side, and then what its motion looks like from the perspective of somebody watching from above. And we're just gonna think about um, its X and Y vectors, its X and Y motion. So think about those things as you watch the video and then come back to me. Okay, so when you watch the video, you're going to see that the path of the water balloon as viewed from the side is going to uh, go down and it won't be exactly like that, uh, but it's going to go down as well as to the right in the x direction. So it's going to go down in the y and to the right in the x as viewed from the side. Now when we look at this water balloon from above, say you're the person in the car dropping the water balloon, um, to you it's just going to look like it's going straight down or like it's maybe just getting smaller. So we have 0x and we have lots of y. Okay? So again, this was back to relative motion that we were talking about before. Motion is relative depending on what perspective you have. And it's important for us to keep this in mind as we're talking about perpendicular vectors x and y. Okay? So Perpendicular vectors, so our x and y, they're perpendicular with each other. They're independent of one another. x does not affect y. y does not affect x. They're independent. They don't need each other, okay? They do both affect the motion of the object, but they do not affect each other. So to find a resultant, just to review, to find your resultant, you need to add your two vector components, your x and your y. And in uh, 2D motion, we're going to use our Pythagorean theorem for that. Rookie mistake, just a reminder, resultants have both magnitude and direction. So make sure you include an angle relative to some direction or position. Not just a plus or a minus, because we're in two dimensions now. Okay. Okay. So here's some practice. I want you to try it on your own before doing it or before watching this video. So after escaping from the Bagni, Papillon is trying to travel north across a 350 meter stretch of river in a boat. The boat can travel at a speed of 15 meters per second, it's still water, and the current flows to the east at 11 meters per second. Okay, so we have this situation set up. He points his boat directly north across the river. What is his total or his resultant velocity? So first what we need to do is we need to draw a picture. We have a 350 meter stretch of river. The boat can travel 15 meters per second and the current's flowing east at 11 meters per second. So here is our 350 meter stretch of river, 350. Okay, and we have our boat velocity it's pointed north at, let's see, we said 11 meters per second. Sorry, we said 15 meters per second, and then the current is 11 meters per second. Okay, so 15 meters per second, and our current is 11 meters per second to the east. Okay, so you can start to see we have two arrows here and we need to add them together using vector addition. Okay, so you need trig for this one. We're trying to figure out his resultant. We're trying to figure out where this person is going to end up along the riverbank. But first we got to find that velocity, that resultant velocity. So we have 15, we have 11. Remember we draw these tip to tail, 
15, and this one's 11, and we're trying to find our resultant, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So that's going to be 15 squared plus 11 squared is equal to, call it r squared, so it's our resultant. And so if you take the square root of 15 squared plus 11 squared, doing it right now. <laughs> and then square root that, you should get 18.6 meters per second. Okay, but remember, that's just a speed. That is not a velocity because it doesn't have direction. So we need to use some trig to find the direction. I'm going to erase some things here so that we have some more room. Yep. So the way that we're going to find that angle, again, we need to use SOCATOA. SOCATOA. So the angle that we're looking at should be um, with respect to north, or you could do with respect to the riverbank. Um, however you want to do this, that's okay. I typically like to do the angle at the base. So this will be with respect to north. Okay. So looking at this, we have an adjacent side and we have an opposite side, which means we have TOA, which means we need to use the tangent. So theta or angle is equal to the inverse tangent or arc tangent of Let's see, TOA opposite over adjacent. Opposite side is 11. Adjacent side is 15. And that should get you an angle of 36 degrees. So this would be, uh, our vector would be 18.6 meters per second at 36 degrees east of north east, oops, that's not knee, east of north. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and erase all of that again. Um, how long does it take to cross the river? So the width of the river is the displacement in the y direction. So we only need to use the y velocity for how long it takes to cross the river. Okay. So we have a displacement. We have d is equal to 350 meters. That was the width of the river. And then we know a velocity. The velocity in the Y is 15 meters per second. And we don't have any acceleration, so we can just use V equals D over T. We need to solve for T. So solving for T, T equals D over V. So to get T, we have 350 divided by 15. So 350 divided by 15 is going to get you 23 seconds. So it takes 23 seconds to cross the river. And then final one, how far down the river does he end up? So how far they travel in the X direction depends only on their X velocity and time. So we have an x velocity, the vx is equal to 11 meters per second, because that's the river current. That's a component of our resultant. And we know the time. We solved for time just a moment ago. The time isn't going to be different. Time is, is one of those things. It isn't a vector. It's a scalar. So it's one of those things that's going to really transcend your X and Y. It's the only thing that's not independent of your, I mean, it, it isn't, it is independent of your perpendicular vectors, but it's, it's the only thing that you can kind of exchange between the two of them. Okay. So we have an X and Y and we're looking for D. We're looking for that displacement. Oops. Okay. So we're looking for D. So now we're just going to solve D equals V times t. And if you go ahead and multiply that, 23 
times 11. And if you don't round from your calculator like I didn't, that should get you something like 257 meters. Okay, so that's our answer for part C. Okay, so we have a part two. Um, it's similar stuff. All you're doing is you're playing around with the vectors, making sure that everything's independent except uh, time can be exchanged between the two. So I would like you guys to try this out on your own, if you could. And we'll move on from here. Um, here's a good resource. So for any boat problems like the previous one, and any in your practice, there's this web page called OPhysics, and it has some simulations set up so that you can check your work and play around with uh, boat problem vectors. So that's a good resource for you to check out. Um, before we get into projectile motion more seriously, we have this classic monkey and hunter problem. So there's this classic problem where there's a hunter, maybe we'll say uh, it's a zookeeper hanging out down here on the ground and there's a monkey up here in the tree and maybe the zookeeper needs to dart the monkey. And so where should the zookeeper aim the dart gun? Should they aim directly at the monkey, above the monkey, below the monkey? Where do you think they should aim? Because remember, we've got this dart that is flying at the monkey and the dart it's going to be going this way. It's got some x velocity. But it also has some y velocity. It's also going to be going down. So I want you to watch this short clip and see what happens when this MIT physics professor shoots a dart at this monkey that gets released at the same time the dart is shot. And see if your prediction holds up. Your lab this week is going to involve this classic monkey and hunter problem. Um, finally, this is a similar problem. It's the bullet fired versus bullet dropped. Which one is going to hit the ground first? Do you think the bullet fired from a gun will hit the ground before a bullet that's just dropped, if they're dropped and fired at the same time? Or do you think the dropped one will hit first? Or will they both hit at the same time? Again, be thinking about the independence of perpendicular vectors. Think about how uh, your y velocity does not get affected by your x velocity. Okay, so we have this bullet that's just falling straight down, and we have one that's falling down and moving in the x. Okay, so we're really trying to think just about the VI, the VY, the falling down part. So think about that and then watch this video to see what the results are. Okay, so your homework after this is another set of Giancoli problems. I do have these posted to classrooms, so don't feel like you need to scribble them down. And I have an answer packet posted or an answer key posted so that you can see um, what your answer should be. And again, I would like you to show me your work in your problems. I'm not looking for, uh, you know, I'm not looking for the right answer. I'm looking for, did you try it? How are you solving things? Okay. Uh, make sure you're careful when you enter things into the calculator. Sometimes stuff like the square root of two squared plus four squared will come out wrong uh, without having extra parentheses. So be careful depending on your calculator. All right, that's all I have for you on this one. Next time, we're going to be talking about projectiles.